Ahead on the MTN News, eyes on the sky. I mean, it blew us away. Montanans hit the highway to get the best views of the total solar eclipse. Also, you're going to get a perspective from different people who who actually had experiences with this. A new exhibit calls attention to a dark time in our past. And meet a super senior with a passion for pickleball. And pickleball is one of the, well, it, I, I credit it for saving my life. This 80-year-old athlete is known as the father of the sport here in Billings. Your MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Millions of people across North America donned their sunglasses today to witness one of the most stunning natural phenomenons, a total solar eclipse. The moon having its moment in the sun, blocking all but just a fiery halo of light for three minutes and 47 seconds. Cast a shadow about 100 miles wide through 15 states in just over an hour as it moved across the United States. Well, dozens of Montanans hit the highway this week to take in today's solar eclipse from the path of totality. Tonight, you're going to hear from four of those families, Montanans who traveled to towns they'd otherwise probably never visit, all for an out-of-this-world opportunity. Charlie Kleps begins our team coverage. That solar eclipse, only a partial one here in Montana, and that's why many have opted to hit the road in search of the full experience. The birds quit, but it's the dog like didn't. super dark. As the eclipse overtook the sky along its path of totality, this is super cool. Many Montanans were ready, having traveled hundreds of miles to make sure they were in the right place. Tonight, you'll hear from four who made the journey. It was incredible. You know, everything we heard about it happened. First up, Helen Hester, who flew from Billings to Atlanta to meet her new grandson, and then drove six hours to take in the eclipse from a zoo in Evansville, Indiana. People cheered. And there was the corona, so it was it was really cool. Hester made her travel plans last year. Others started planning even earlier. Seven years ago, when I looked at where the best chance of clear skies was going to be, Texas was the place. Belgrade resident Melody Musson and her family made Texas travel plans almost immediately after the total eclipse in 2017. By the time it went into totality, we could see it just perfectly. I mean, it blew us away. Her fears of cloudy skies proved to not be true as they managed to capture these wonderful pictures of Monday's event. Really, anywhere from here up through Missouri, Illinois, I think a lot of folks, you know, got a pretty good show. Billings National Weather Service meteorologist Joe Lester and his family drove more than 20 hours to Arkansas. It's super cool. You, you, you stand here and you can feel the air get cooler. We just wanted to find a good spot to pull over and uh, a lot of room. A trip Lester says was more than worth it with a Lockwood couple nearby. We live in Stone County, Arkansas. Right in yeah. totality. Paul and Barb Sunderland's daughter, Amanda Jordahl, just happens to live in the path of totality. So the couple pushed their annual trip up a couple of weeks. Luck of the draw. We just happened to live here. <laughs> She lives here and she said, well, they're going to have the best view of it here and they're going to have a festival in town and everything. A choice they certainly don't regret. It's pretty cool as actually you can see sunrise and sunset at the same time. An experience of a lifetime and one that now has many already looking ahead 20 years to the next one. We're already talking about 2044. My kids will be all grown up. And I'm like, well, <laughs> we're going to do this with the next generation. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. While Billings may not have experienced total darkness, many still participated in festivities for the day. As clouds filled the sky late Monday morning, people filled Castle Rock Park for a chance to see the partial solar eclipse. I wasn't sure if this was going to actually happen because of the clouds. Those clouds parted and let everyone enjoy a glimpse of the moon passing between the sun and the earth. You can see it pretty well. This wasn't the first time Catherine Bracken and her family have seen a partial eclipse, but it was an especially memorable one. We came out because it's my daughter's birthday. She's turning 10 today, and we thought that was pretty unique to have a solar eclipse on your birthday. Must be some cloud or something. Sam Martinson and his brother-in-law decided to stop in the Heights for the show. I told him about it, and I said, well, let's go up there and see if we can uh, see the eclipse. While everyone enjoyed looking to the sky. It almost looks like a crescent moon with these, doesn't it? You gotta look straight up at the sun. There's just so many things that are special about this one. 
For Constance Smith, it was also a moment to reflect. It's such a time for us to be able to see new things, to see the uniqueness of each of us and come together for something as exciting as this. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. We did have some clouds, but the sun managed to break through enough to give Montanans some views of the eclipse. Here's a look from the Montana State Capitol in Helena as the eclipse happened this afternoon. Montana will be in the path of totality for the next solar eclipse, but we'll have to wait a while for that. Here's Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh now. Russ, we only have to wait 20 years, four months, and two weeks before we have another total eclipse across North America. But look at the path coming right down through Canada. Great Falls, 99% for Billings, and then it fades as the sun sets once we start getting into the Dakotas. I'm glad I don't have to move too far. I'll be 85 by then. But something that will happen much sooner than 20 years from now, thunderstorms. And in fact, our storm spotter training is coming up a week from today. The community room at the Billings Public Library. Some uh, uh, great information about how storms form, storm safety. It's great as a refresher. And if it's your first time, we'd love to see you. It's free. Just come and join us. That'll be next Monday at the library starting at 630. Last year, plaintiffs in the held climate lawsuit argued the state of Montana had a responsibility to consider climate change as part of maintaining a healthful environment. After a judge sided with them, advocates are now asking the state's utility regulators to change the way they consider climate change. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Amberian was there for the hearing. The Montana Public Service Commission's hearing room was full Monday as conservation groups, businesses and others made the case that the commission should be accounting for the costs of climate change when making regulatory decisions. We are here today to listen to public comment. The proposal came from 42 petitioners who asked the PSC to create a rule to apply a social cost of greenhouse gas emissions when ruling on the actions of electrical and gas companies. Leaders said they've long felt the PSC had a responsibility to consider climate impacts as part of the constitutional right to a clean and healthful environment. They decided after the decision in last year's held case, it was the right time to bring this proposal forward. Supporters of the proposed rule said climate change threatens Montana's environment, human health, and the recreation economy, and said the state's emissions are enough to make a difference. It's this commission, and not the utilities it regulates, that has the responsibility uh, to advance the public interest and to avoid unjust and unreasonable costs and risks to Montanans. And it cannot defer that obligation for decades. Every year that we delay curbing emissions, we pay the price in dollars and lives lost. In this case, it's clear that an ounce of prevention is truly worth a pound of cure. Opponents of the rule included energy companies, coal and oil producers, and industrial unions. They said it would raise costs for energy ratepayers, threaten jobs in the state, and go beyond the PSC's authority to implement. This rule is not about climate change, whether it's happening or whether it's destructive. We are not here today to dispute that science. What we are here to dispute is who should pay for the cost of climate change. Petitioner's proposal stretches well beyond what is permitted under the Montana Administrative Procedures Act. Petitioner's recourse is with the legislature, not the commission. The commission will continue taking written public comment on this proposal through Friday. After that, they'll have to go through all the comments they've received before making a decision on whether to move forward with formal rulemaking. There's no indication yet on when that decision could be made. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. American Indian boarding schools will be featured at the Western Heritage Center starting tomorrow. It tells what happens to children that the federal government took from their families and put into those schools to educate and assimilate into society. David Jay has more on the new exhibit. They have some diplomas hanging here on the wall from the Carlisle Indian Industrial School. It's quite an opportunity here for the Western Heritage Center with all the artifacts and pictures and memorabilia to help tell the story of Indian boarding schools. It is uh, kind of gut-wrenching when you look at the handcuffs and imagining children having to wear these. Cecilia Gavinsky is the collections manager at the Western Heritage Center. Her grandfather was a rosebud Sioux and was put into a boarding school in South Dakota. Just the way they had been treated and, you know, so it does, it brings it home. And so he actually wrote a book and it's in part of his book. The handcuffs are just one of the artifacts actually used at the boarding schools. It's a... Uh, 
powerful energy once you get to, to stand next to it. So the idea that you would have that done as you entered like a school situation like that is pretty appalling. Kevin Koistra, executive director at the Western Heritage Center, shows a barber chair used at boarding schools. They're going to cut their hair off. They're going to change their clothes. They're going to impose kind of a sense of military rules about what they can say or what they can speak. Can they dance? You know, all of these things are supposedly good for them to eradicate all those elements of their own personal cultural backgrounds. The traveling exhibit does show some celebrations, such as Olympic and professional athlete Jim Thorpe, who played football at the Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania. He becomes recognized because of his athletic skill set and uh, becomes well known throughout the United States. I don't know if people knew that he was connected to Carlisle. And there's the energy and excitement of the marching band. They're marching and they're making art and just having um, that part of it, so it's not all completely sad. But there are sad parts to the children in the Indian boarding schools. People are going to have very strong emotional impacts. What is our place in our history and how, how do we uh, look back in these events and what do we learn from these events? The exhibit runs through May 25th. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, this week's super senior has been credited with bringing a popular sport to Billings. I'll introduce him to you next. And let's rodeo. The college rodeo season kicks off in Montana. That's coming up a little later in sports. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news.